We're back with Judge John Noonan, uh, Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, good friend of Mosaic for many years. Uh, the occasion of this visit is his new book by the University of Notre Dame Press, A Church That Can and Cannot Change. We'll get back to the topics of the book, but um, viewers are always interested in people as well as um, as, as well as the subject matter. Now, you know, from your intonation and voice, I gather you came from the Boston area originally? I, did. I came uh, west by way of Notre Dame. I taught at Notre Dame Law School for a number of years before coming to teach at Bolt Hall in Berkeley. And that's uh, why you're, m m many people grow up in religious yeah. traditions and many people go into the law, but from my uh, perspective, few people maintain both a high interest in law and a high interest in faith. What, what, what is it about this faith and this church that has captured you over the, over the decades? Well, apart from being brought up in it, I uh, guess I've always been uh, attracted uh, by the uh, paradoxes it presents. And uh, before I went to law school, I went so far as to take a degree in philosophy at Catholic University, so that plunged me at once into uh, some of these paradoxes, and I've maintained that interest, uh, that interest over, over the years. What part of your faith speaks to you now or interests you? Well, it's hard to uh, parcel it out. I guess it's, yeah. it's the whole ball of wax, but uh, of course it's been quite uh, striking to have a new pope and actually to have the Archbishop of San Francisco, a friend, appointed to be the head of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. That's the highest position an American has ever been given in the Roman Curia. I take that as a good sign. <laughs> Exciting to know about. the. Um You've lived in Berkeley then for how many years now? Since 1967. And tell us a little bit about your family, if you would. Well, uh, I've lived there with my wife, and we have three children who are now in their 30s. And this year, two of those children in their 30s are getting married, and that's quite an event. <laughs> and the third is, is not, but uh, uh, I suppose that's very typical of today's uh, yeah. young people. And the, um, how do you find time? You're now a, a, a senior judge uh, with the Ninth Circuit, meaning you've uh, re reduced your workload a little bit. It's a pretty good deal. I can do as much work as I want if I say it at the beginning of the year, and then I keep my job and my office staff, and uh, I've cut back about 30 to 40 percent, but I still get quite a lot of work done. <laughs> as much as you want. When do you find time to write? Well, there's still a lot of time. If you do the cases promptly, still a lot of time. Do you, um, do you like to write in the morning or at night, or do you have a in, sequence? In, in, or no, no particular sequence, no. Any, any time is good. And this is, um, how many books have you published? I know uh, Fourteen. Fourteen, yeah. and you're already at work on another one, you said. I am, on what it's like to be a judge, and I'm reflecting on uh, experiences that I've accumulated now over almost 20 years. Look forward to that. How, uh, how many years out do you think? A year or two from now? or I hope a year, year from now. A year from now. We'll yeah. look for that. Let's get back, though. Thank you for sharing something of your personal life. Uh, let's get back to the University of Notre Dame Press, the church that can and cannot change. Uh, the church you refer to is the Roman Catholic Church, and you're looking at four issues over the course, um, I suppose, of centuries. Right. And uh, we, we talked some about marriage, but I think it's important that uh, perhaps you say we go back and understand that that grounding is in Scripture. That's, That's right. All of these developments have some basis in Scripture. They're not out of the blue. It's just that the uh, little fragile roots in Scripture needed development to emerge the way they have. But in the case of the de large development now going on in marriage, uh, it's the letter of the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, where he deals with the case of a convert who has been married, and the convert's spouse does not convert, but instead says, I don't want anything to do with the Christian faith, and leaves. What is the position of the abandoned convert? Mm. And Paul says, in that case, the brother or the sister, referring to the Christian, is not bound 
to keep the marriage. In other words, divorce was perfectly possible for the abandoned convert. Well, that's the root of uh, the larger development. There, it seems, it used to be called the Pauline privilege. It's a very special case, mm -hmm. the abandoned convert. That principle that uh, the marriage w of the unbaptized are not treated as indissoluble has been given this very large expansion I referred to. So the church feels that it can dissolve such marriages in many different situations. We've been given a glimpse here in how the church as an institution changes, how it bases itself on scripture. These four examples in uh, the new book by Judge Noonan. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, fourth one on religious liberties. Stay with us. <laughs>